what we've got today is a shuttle shift for a 580 Super E case backhoe. And that's my backhoe. And, uh, started acting funny and got to where it wouldn't shift or go into forward or reverse. So this is actually called a shuttle shift. And basically what it is, is it's an automatic transmission that just has one forward gear and one reverse gear. So we're gonna rebuild that today. And I noticed there's no good videos on YouTube really showing a how-to that's in depth on this particular shuttle. So I thought that me and Aaron would uh, attempt to make a video to show some people out there that may uh, need some knowledge on how to take one of these apart and put it back together and put a rebuild kit in it and new clutches. I'm just going to start by taking some of this stuff off the outside of the case. Also, if you are serious about doing this, I would suggest and highly recommend that you get yourself uh, a service manual. It'll kind of guide you through it a little bit. And so we'll be referring to that from time to time, things that we're not real sure of. We're moving some loose. of the lines here. Break that Not that one. Yeah. These two ports right here are your lines that goes to the oil cooler in and out. girls that built this thing. <laughs> this some is tough arm, run I thought. arms on them. Yeah. Let's see if I can get where I can hit it. Oh yeah. Let's take it off here and we'll get it break Beat loose in the box. This is a this this part right here is actually a relief valve and that really needs to be checked and be cleaned. This part right here, it's on the line assembly. We get this uh, harness out of the way here. This is just a ground. it's connected that's the whole harness right there it's the transmission they want off isn't it start removing this cover i'm gonna go get another battery this battery's dropped it's not bad battery it's just anyway remove this cover we got to change the battery in the tool new battery another one there bearing right there by your foot. Don't want too far. Detent balls. That's for the shifter. Yep. That's what kind of gives you your uh, forward, neutral, and reverse positions on your shifter. And you can see the little recessed pieces right here where the balls are. We dropped one in the floor, but we found it. So watch out for that shooting across the room. Now this is the control valve. This is like a, takes the place of kind of like what a valve body would do on the bottom of a normal automatic transmission. 
but since this only has forward and reverse, there's no need to have all those check valves and everything to uh, send fluid to different clutch packs. There's only two clutch packs in this, forward and reverse. I think there's seven clutches in the forward and three in uh, reverse. Please. Another thing you'll wanna do, probably first, is you'll wanna remove this uh, clutch disengage solenoid right here. Then you take the shifting linkage arm off of the transmission. Instruction manual actually doesn't specify exactly how to get this control valve out. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Snapping right there, yeah. I think. So we're gonna figure it out. See if there's a snap right ring holding it in. Right there. And looks like there's a snap ring on this part right here. Come on. Across the room it goes. I'll go for a transmission. So we're going to get the tool to uh, get that snap ring out. This pair don't work. We'll we're try trying to get the, we'll try the snap ring out. Find a pair small enough to get in there to get it out because it's recessed a little bit. Hopefully now the control valve can be removed. This was down when I took that first part off yeah. the left and down. I think like it's this. got a keyway in it or something. Well, this this uh, right here has got a. Yeah. That's where the detent ball and stuff rolls in there. So. So there is the control valve. And then, of course, later on we'll take that apart and inspect it to make sure this could actually be what my problem was. Because if the spring is broken in there, uh, it won't let pressure go to the forward or the reverse clutches. Kind of just like having the solenoid uh, engaged. The the clutch uh, disengagement solenoid that we just took off and showed you. That spring looks good down It will be the same thing. And then this is a spring down inside there. You can barely mm -hmm. see. But we'll be inspecting that a little closer too. See if something may be wrong with that. Next thing, uh, next thing is going to be to take the oil pan off. So we're going to just see what little bit of oil is left in there. I haven't drained all of it out yet. Uh-oh, we got some water. With some water and that's not good. Condensation. And that can happen when uh, this machine sat for years. I let it sit for a long time and didn't use it. So now I'm paying the price of having to rebuild a bunch of stuff on it. But hopefully it'll be in good shape when I get done. I'll bring you back when we take the oil pan off. Removal of the oil pan, pretty self-explanatory. There's a lot of you, bro. You losing suction, I guarantee you. We can see there that the screen is sucked in, so that means that it's been stopped up and possibly maybe burnt the pump up, which I got a new pump and uh, new clutches and everything. So, but this is what you may run into on your transmission. You'll see that there's quite a bit of uh, debris down in the bottom of the pan there, which would be a bad thing if we weren't rebuilding it. If we were just gonna service this and find that in there, that would be uh, to raise some con concern because possibly the, the clutch material has come loose from the discs or could just be contaminants like dirt. Uh, the water was not good, obviously. And there's a magnet, so we do have some uh, magnetic material stuck to it, which you'll always have a little bit of that. But as long as you don't have any big shavings or chunks, that's what you really don't want. So. So far, so good here. We removed the screen here and it just kind of twists out. Just twist it and it comes out out of the bottom there. But there's where it went, right in this hole right here. 
So here we're just uh, taking brake parts cleaner and kind of cleaning all that stuff out of the, the mesh screen. Then we'll, we'll blow some compressed air through it after that. Just make sure that's clean. So now what we're doing is uh, taking the bell housing off or, or what they call the torque, the torque converter cover. That's this part right here. And some of them are pretty tight. But there's, uh, I don't know, probably five, one, two, three, four bolts, four bolts around through there that hold that on. So we're going to get that out of the way. Five bolts. One, two, three, four, I think five. So we're going to get that off and bring it back after that. Okay, we got that off. Just set that in the floor. It came off real easy. I mean, we didn't have to pry or hit it with a hammer or nothing. It just came right off. So hopefully yours will. Now this is the pump. This is what's next. That's the actual, what they call the, the torque converter charge pump is the technical term for this piece right here. And I have a new one to put on. I would suggest getting a new one of these if you're getting this far into the, into the shovel shift right here because it's only like 160 bucks. And I guarantee you, if you've had any debris in your pan at all, that this has probably got a lot of wear on it. And it's way too much work to put this in, take it out, and not replace this part right here. Because this is what gives you pressure for your forward clutches and your re reverse clutches. So if that thing's worn, you're not getting, you're, you're going to get slippage on your clutches. And it's just going to be a matter of time before it wears out and burns up. Next thing we're doing is we're moving these bolts right here to remove the charge pump. There's four bolts there, half inch. All right, we had to tap this with a hammer and kind of get it loose and it should slide right out, right off the shaft. And there's what it looks like. That's your pump right there. Actually, looks pretty good. It looks good on the surface anyway. There's the cracks in this thing. But right we don't know. And that's what it'll look like when you get it off. But I would suggest getting a new one of these because it's not that expensive. And it's, like I said, it's just way too much work to take a chance on one of these on a machine this old. Okay, now that we've got the charge pump removed, the manual says that we need to check the in play of this shaft. That's the in and out motion of this shaft. And I'll show you the picture. You can see this tool right here. That's a dial indicator with a magnetic base right here. And that, that will measure the end play. You can see this right here. I hope you can. I don't know if it's fo it'll focus, but that's what we've got to do next. And then we can, uh, we can remove this housing right here. This housing. Okay, we checked the end play on this shaft. I probably should have videoed that, but anyway, if you don't have the tool, it doesn't matter anyway, but the in and out of this shaft can be within spec if it's 10 thousandths to 86 thousandths, and this particular one was 33, so according to the manual, it's well within specs, which is surprising. That's pretty good. So the next thing, we got to take this cover off. They're just calling it a cover, but I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a piston in there that, re that works, puts pressure on the reverse clutches. So this is going to take a 7 16 12 point three oh it's a 3 8 i'm sorry a 3 8 12 point thin walled socket to get this off and if you don't have that you might want to get get one before you tear it apart let me get a uh, let me get a, something solid a chip. This has got a gasket, either a gasket or an O-ring on it. We'll see when we get this off. But we're gonna have to surprise it off there. Give it some persuasion of some kind. There goes something shoving that apart. Show them what, the, what you use there. Just a little, got a little chisel up on these little lips that are sticking out. A blunt chisel there. And this, this actually has just enough lip that sticks uh, proud of this case that you can get purchase on that and just take your hammer and don't waylay it, just kind of tap it, love tap it, and try to get it. There's a gasket. Yeah, that's the gasket. But, uh, and there it comes. And there's the pressure plate. 
what I want to do, I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to mm -hmm. get a paint marker. I'm going to mark how that's laid in there just, just in case it has to be. It does. That way, so it we'll mark it. it has to be a certain way. All these little springs, too. If that's the clutch, it don't look too terrible. Mm -hmm. And then. But there's the inside of it. It actually looks good so far. You get a paint marker. Pressure plate looks pretty good. Looks really good, actually. Everything's looking good so far. Almost looks brand new in here, which is good. But that's we, we haven't found anything yet that was causing the problem. So we'll keep looking. I suspect it could possibly be this control valve causing the whole problem. But we're going to rebuild it anyway. Went this far. So uh, go ahead and put all new seals in it. I mean, the machine is, you know, 30 years old. Uh, it's going to benefit from putting some new seals in it. <laughs> we got the pressure plate out and the cover. That's the cover. It's laying it on its top. And it looks like we got a thrust washer right here that takes up play inside there. That was one of the things that uh, probably we had to take that measurement on the shaft in play. So this is what would normally be called a fiber clutch, but this one has the bronze, the real good clutches in it. And you'll have a, one of these, and then you'll have a, what they call a, a friction plate. Looks like that. And they have to go in a certain way as well. Lock on those mm -hmm. pins right there. Indexing pins. Those are gonna fall out. Yeah, I've seen that. And those are good. He's removing the indexing pins. He's <laughs> one of them. Take this one out this one here. So this is what runs your reverse right here, what we just took out. That's all the reverse clutches that there is. And inside this clutch basket will be the forward, and I think there's seven total, and only three here. Six or seven in forward, but we'll see. Now he's just going to pull the uh, whole assembly out of there, input shaft and clutch basket. All slide, should slide right out. There we go. Got some uh, rings on here. Okay, now in the manual, it, the one they're working on doesn't have a yoke on the output shaft, but we got to remove that to get the rest of it apart on the inside. So we're just using a hammer and being kind of easy. You don't want to weigh it because there's bearings in there. If you hit it too hard, you could possibly put flat spots on the bearings, which you don't want. So there's the yoke removed. That's what your drive shaft bolts to. And that's what it'll look like when it comes out. And there's a, there's a seal there, lip seal. Now what we're doing is we're removing the shaft. Maybe. We're removing this shaft from the inside and you have to hit it. And hopefully you don't get your fingers mashed. It's pretty very time. It's being stubborn. Pretty. I don't think it's even moving, is it? I don't think so. I'm gonna mark this right here. That way we can kind of see if it is moving or not. What if we take his house? Oh, it's got the bearing in it. Mm -hmm. So, what I mark it at? Okay, so we found a solution. We're just taking a socket that fits around these threads right here. You don't want to hit on top of these threads really and booger them. So what we did is we found a socket that just fits around that and, and bottoms out on the top of the shaft. 
and then just take the hammer like this and and hit on the top and then we also we stuck some rags up inside there to cushion it just in case it all falls out and it won't hurt anything on top of the rack here so here's what he's doing in the service manual it shows just taking a uh, a soft hammer and knocking it out but of course you know that's not reality <laughs> if you've ever worked on anything you'll you'll know that they make it look so easy in the manual but when you actually do it it's something that's been in one position for a long time uh several decades it has a tendency to not want to move and stay where it is so here's what it looks like inside there i'm just using some parts cleaner and cleaning it out and there's a needle bearing right here and then also in the back where the yoke was there's a roller bearing back in there uh, i shouldn't have to mention but it's always good to try to keep the transmission or anything that's hydraulic as clean as you possibly can and try to keep lint and dirt and any other kind of stuff that you wouldn't want in there any kind of contaminants out of there because any kind of debris that you have in a hydraulic system obviously is going to wear it out quicker Okay, and you'll notice when you get this apart, there's a baffle in the bottom. And it looks like that. It, it sits right in here in the bottom and it just pulls out. There's no bolts or anything in it. You just kind of pry up. It sits in there like this and you just kind of pry up on that. Not too hard, you don't want to bend it. But uh, just be careful with it and it just slides right out. Friction fit. Okay, here's the snap ring that has to come out first, right here in order to get this shaft out. So we're taking that snap ring off. Snap ring pliers and a flat hitch screwdriver. Be careful not to break the snap ring. So here's what we came up with. Just real easily, if you don't have a press, just real easily tap that. Hopefully yours will come out as easy. This one came out really easy. We just propped it up on some blocks right here. So that way the shaft had room to come out the bottom. Be careful, don't let your shaft fall out and hit the concrete because it is hard and it's likely that you would bend it or break it. So here's the clutch drum with the shaft removed and down in there's your clutches. That's your forward clutches right there. And the, those big snap rings will allow the pressure plate and all those clutches to come out two snap rings in there. And remember what I said, you, you, you'll want to make sure not mix up the snap rings because they're thickness specific to which side they go on to allow the, the proper clearance in the clutches. Okay, you can see, well, I hope you can see He's got that snap ring started out. This kitten just comes right out. And you can see it right there. And also the thickness of, we got to measure the thickness of this snap ring with a mic that tells you to measure this and, and remember where this snap ring was because there's two different thicknesses and they're the same diameter. So if you get them mixed up, it's, it's not good because you won't have the correct pressure or the correct uh, amount of play in the clutches. So you got to uh, take a mic or a calipers and measure the thickness of this one and, and the other one that's gonna come out of here later. Okay, now this is the other side. You can see the shaft right there. And there's another snap ring. And this is the one you don't want to get mixed up. You got to know which one goes where. This one goes on the front side. The shaft side. On the shaft side right here. And this one right here goes on the, on the side we just showed you. It goes down in the clutch drum. Removing that bottom part out of this clutch drum here. It's got a socket in there. Give it a little taps. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tappy.
Sure. You have a press that you can set up to do this. Yeah, Should you can be. do it in a press too. It's just real Somewhere hard. Almost be out. It's just yeah. real hard to catch the lip of this in the press because it's so narrow. It's only. <laughs> A lot easier for his stock to yeah. stay in place too. If it'll move, just tap it out like this. And just like that, like magic, it comes out. And there's the clutch of ruse. That's called a Belleville washer. That's a spring really is what that is. That piece that he just took out and put back in there. But anyway, here's where the clutches are. There's another little snap ring. And there's the first pressure plate. And fiber. And another friction. Well, they smell like. Sometimes you can smell them and they'll have a burnt smell. Not really. If they've really been worn too much, but they don't look bad. Well, yeah, they do too. Yeah, they can yeah, see. The, yeah, they're, these are, it's these one. need replaced. Yeah, well, here's a piece of one of them yeah. stuck there. Yeah. So. That one's going there. There you go. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to see something wrong, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> I, getting, I, hate, I hate taking something apart <laughs> and I find something wrong. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is burnt too. There's pieces of it. So this is what happens when you don't have enough pressure or if you have a, uh, well really if you don't have enough pressure to engage the clutches. That could be caused by the control valve. It could be caused by a bad pump. Your pump pressure is low. Uh, could be just some, any type of restriction in the flow of your fluid. Do any of them smell? Don't really smell too bad. Not like they normally do. Not yeah. like they're absolutely cooked. So there's all the, all the forward clutches out with the clutch drum. And that's all there is to that. Take it disassembly. Now next we'll probably get back on the dis or rebuilding it, putting the clutches back in. Okay, so we removed this gasket, getting ready to reassemble everything. Let's clean that up with a roll lock. That's, that's a roll lock tool right there. I'm just polishing that pressure plate right now. Not trying to remove material, you just kind of polish it up and flick it up. It's got any little spots or blemishes on there, just kind of polish them off. You can do that to all of the metal plates that go in between the fiber plates. Got a nice clean surface there. We're getting ready to put clutches in. Pressure plate. So we're just gonna go in reverse order of these old ones right here. So next will be an actual clutch plate and see these new clutches showing the difference between the old paper clutches see these are the old let me get straightened up here that's the old style and these are susceptible to contaminants and water will cause this material to come off of the metal disc and that's a problem so the better ones are like i forgot what they call this but it's like a bronze coating and the water if there's any moisture that gets in there into your fluid it won't uh, cause that to come loose on you so those are better if you have the opportunity to get to specify that material you're better off
from what I understand. So they just flip flop metal, fiber, metal, fiber. Obviously these don't have the fiber on them, but that's the only thing I know to call them. You got your uh, metal clutch and the fiber clutch, metal clutch, fiber clutch, and then you'll have another pressure plate on the top. We'll bring you back when we get done with this. I wanted to mention that uh, each one of these needs to have a little coating of oil on there, just motor oil um, on, on both sides of each one. So we're rigging up a little uh, container with some oil in the bottom. We'll just drop each one of these discs in first so that way it coats the whole thing before we put it in here. Um, that way we won't have any problems burning anything up right off the get-go. Okay, so here's what we rigged up just to cut the hole in the jug and cleaned it out and put some oil in the bottom of it. You can dip each clutch in there. Just coat it real good before you put it in the clutch basket. Simple as that. And what you'll want to try to do too, if you can, is try to keep these teeth lined up the best you can. So that way when you go to put the shaft back in, then it'll actually go in there and you won't have to mess around with it for three hours trying to get it to go down in there. Again, what he's doing is just polishing these up. He's got any little specks and spots on there. Just uh, not trying to remove any thickness or any material, really just polish them up and clean them real good. It's got any water spots or rust or anything on there. You just want to get that off. Polish them up real good. Still in the tool that you're using there. Most people have seen these right here. It's kind of like, it's almost like Scotch Bright. They call these roll lock. Roll lock. Obviously you could do that by hand, but most people have some sort of a Dremel or something with a, a wheel like that on it. So in our kit, we've got new metal clutches, um, but if your kit doesn't have that, you know, we want to show you how to polish yours a little bit. But our kit happens to have the metal and the fiber clutches as well. So we're just gonna put the brand new ones in there, obviously. We're stuck together. <laughs> So I think I already mentioned it, but they flip flop. You put a metal one in, a fiber one in, a metal one in, a fiber one in until you get done putting all your clutches in. Then you'll have a thick one that goes on the top here. So there was a fiber one and then goes the metal one. This is one of the new ones in the kit. And then comes another fiber one and drop them in the oil. Just drop them in there and get a good coating of oil on there and drop it in. And then comes another metal one. And oil, another fibered one. So seven, seven fibers, and we'll either be six or or, six, or eight six metals. metals. Six metals and plus the thick ones. Yep. Okay. So here's the thick one laying there. Getting ready to wipe it off and oil it and put it in. See how thick this one is. You can see that's a lot thicker than the, the rest of them. And also you can tell that that's the top one because it's got a ridge on one side. Like that, see that this lip that's in the middle of it's kind of raised. That'll go on the top. The smooth surface will go face down against this, which is that side, the shiny side. And that'll be your last plate and the forward clutch assembly down in the drum.
Okay, so remember when I told you that you need to make sure and check the thickness of these snap rings because they're different and they, and they go in different spots. So the one that goes on the top of your clutch pack right here that holds the, the clutches in is going to be 90 thousandths. As you can see right there, I hope you can see it. It's 90 thousandths, so you, you'll check that thickness and make sure that, that, that one should feel like the thickest one and in the manual it tells you the same thing right here uh must be 90 thousandths to 93 thousandths or 2.9 no 2.29 to 2.36 millimeter if you're going on millimeters that's what that sh that uh, snap ring should measure that goes on top of the clutch assembly right there okay so this piece right here is the piece that goes down in the clutch assembly down in here and here's what it looks like so that way you'll know what it is that's that end piece okay now there's a piston that's in there you may not notice it but that piston is in there and what you have to do is you have to there's some holes some passageways inside here i don't know if you can see the holes but what you want to do is you want to block off a couple of them and and gently blow some compressed air in there and it will it will and hold your hold your fingers over top of that piston because you don't want to blow it out but that air pressure will actually lift that piston out and and then you can remove it and there's an o-ring on the outside and there's a there's a o-ring on the inside right here so that's what we're doing now okay in your rebuild kit you'll want to locate this new ring and it's not a round one it's, a, it's actually a square or rectangular ring, ceiling ring right there, if you can see that. It's not round. Here's the round. That's the one that actually goes right here. So what we've done, we cleaned these parts really well with the parts cleaner, and he's installing the, the new gasket. The ceiling ring on the piston. And the O-ring, the round one. And the groove right here. Then of course we'll lubricate those. It says to use petroleum jelly to lubricate those. Uh, or if you have assembly jelly for transmissions, that would be good too. Or if you don't have either one, at least lubricate it with some motor oil or something of that nature. Straight 30 weight non-detergent non would be a good choice. Okay, so we put the O-rings on. And now we're just trying to get the piston back down in there. We've got lubrication on there. Sometimes you may have to help it just a little. Don't go crazy. You don't want to cut the seal. You don't want to stick anything sharp on there onto that seal to go down in the piston. You just got to try to help it get started. before it got on there, so we're blowing that out. See it moving. Barely raise up now, so now it's, now it's actually pretty good. So we've got that together. Something else I wanted to mention too is when you take these components out, kind of think of it as each thing is its own compartment. So when you go to rebuild it, rebuild one thing at a time and get that compartment done or that component done. So that way you have less of a chance of leaving out parts or forgetting something and just set that stuff aside and then go on to the next component that you gotta put seals in. Uh, and for example, this whole clutch compartment, we're not gonna stop on it and go to anything else until we know that we've got it completed, ready to go back in. Same thing on, on everything that we do here. We're gonna try to uh, do one thing at a time and complete the whole task before we go on to the next thing. Okay, don't forget this little metal ring right here. It's got a split in it. It almost looks like a piston ring, but it's round. And that goes in that little groove. Don't forget that on that piston. And then goes your Belleville washer. Facing That's down. actually a spring. 
and the concave part goes down. In other words, the part that's, that's actually going in like this, down. You don't want to flop it the other way. That's what holds spring pressure on your clutch plates. Which is going to be fun. So now we're going to attempt to put that in to the clutch basket. Which is just going to fall. There's no gears or anything on that, right? Just smooth, smooth wall. We're going to give this some more tap, tap, tappy love taps. Turn just over, make real sure. easy. Just like that. I'm gonna flip it upside down, make sure that washer's and that little ring should be in it. Yep, it's right there in its place. I just want to make sure. So I bet. And so what you'll want to do is make sure that this is down far enough to ex accept the snap ring that goes right here. And we're not there yet, but just keep tapping away until we get there. Well, either that or maybe even put it in the press. Yeah, put it we'll in the push, press. Push a bit we had it in the press before it feels and solid. loosened it up. against the spring now so we'd have to probably put some pressure on that yeah see that that's what this spring the, the Belleville washer does is it holds tension on that and it's probably gonna have to put it back in the press and press this down so that way it'll reveal the snap ring slot right here so we can put the snap ring back in and once again these are certain uh, thickness snap rings that you need to know and the one that goes in this one I'll have to look in the manual and tell you exactly what the measurement is and I'll get back with you on that one. Okay, so the snap ring that goes on the outside of the clutch drum there that we just showed you, uh, the manual says 74 to 78 thousandths or 1.88 to 1.96 or 98, I can't see it, millimeters. So what we're doing now is we're setting up the press just getting it uh, set up to where we can press that down in there uh, far enough to where we can put the snap ring back in. Have to put some tension on it. So when we're setting this up, we realized that you really need to get the snap ring ready to go before you close the gap on top of the press. So that way you can go ahead and put the snap ring in while it's under tension in the press. We're just sneaking up on it here to see if we can get enough snap ring groove to get the snap ring in there. Pew. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Pew. We're not down far enough yet, and I'm telling you, I got quite a bit of pressure on there, and I, more than what I really think we should have. Or have to have anyway. Okay, so what we discovered, the reason it was being stubborn going in, that Belleville spring or Belleville washer that's down in there wasn't exact, that has to be centered exactly, and it got a little bit cockeyed in there. So we had to straighten that up, and then the piston went on down in pretty easy. So now I see the snap ring groove, so hopefully the snap ring will go in now. Went in really easy. Just make sure the seat's good. So the snap rings in there and it's grooved and it's holding it in. 
And we have another snap ring on the other side to deal with now. Okay, so now we're replacing these little metal ceiling rings that are on the shaft. And they're tricky. You just gotta be really careful with them and don't bend them too much. Don't, don't pull too much on them and break them because they're made out of cast iron and they will break. So just, just go just enough to get them out of the groove and get them up out of the groove and off of the shaft. And then when you put them back on, you gotta put the one that's farthest to the bottom of the shaft first because you don't wanna to try to climb over the, the one that you've already put on. It makes it hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. So one of them's off. Got one off. And it looks like this. That's what they look like. See, they've got that little clasp that catches right there. Locks in. That's what's hard to get out. Just be real careful with them. There's several of those in this transmission. Okay, we've already got one of the snap rings on, on here. You gotta be real careful with these. Just don't, don't bend them apart no more than you have to. And you gotta push one side down so it'll go up over top of itself and then let it lock down on itself like that. I'm going to clasp in there. Now on this end we've got two plastic ones or Teflon or whatever they are. Yeah, right this end has two small ones but they're not those cast ones. These are made out of some kind of plastic. Let's see if I can find those. Uh, I don't know if I got those. I don't see them. I should have them. This is supposed to have everything in it. And of course, they'll leave something out every time. But. So now we've got the snap ring that I showed you that we had to put in the press. It's in there on the top side. And we got the snap ring going to go on the back side right here. But right now we're putting the shaft in and the snapper ring that goes on the shaft. You gotta kind of finagle it in down through the clutch plates to get the shaft down as far as it needs to go to get the snapper ring in. Probably mm, gonna have to tap it down the other way just a little bit more. Just a little. shaft in there far enough for the snap ring to go in. Go in there? And I hope we don't have a clutch boogered up in there. No, it's not. It's, I think the brace on the, on the uh, bearing rode up with the, putting that shaft through. Okay, so we got the snap ring in on the shaft and the bottom. We were just, we were concerned about whether or not it was going in far, far enough and we determined it, that it is. So now we're putting this snap ring on the top. And 
think I already told you the measurement for the top snap ring, so I'll have to go look it up again. And And now what it wants you to do is once you get that snap ring in, it wants you to take a feeler's gauge and stick it underneath the top plate and in the snap ring groove. And you should have a measurement of 11 thousandths to I think it said 43 thousandths. But I'll look again and see. Okay, so the book says 11 thousandths to 46 thousandths or 0.28 to 1.17 millimeters measurement with a feeler's gauge okay here's our little baffle plate we're going to put it back in into the case and it just friction fits in there get a lot of work to see here make sure it's So it's fitting a little loose, so what we're going to do is take it back out and flex it a little bit and tighten it back up. It's just spring fit, friction fit in there. No bolts or anything. Okay, so we got the planetary back in here. That's the only thing we've done since the last I videoed there. Got that back in the case and housing. And my kit did not have the correct size seal for this and a couple other of those metal rings, cast iron rings that go on this shaft. They sent rings, but they're the wrong size. So that's not good. So we're just going to use the old seal again, which I don't really want to do. So we're going to put the yoke back on. Okay, so what we got to do here is on these on these uh, shafts or the output shaft where the yoke goes He's going to put some sealant around that because if you don't the oil can leak up these splines and come out the yoke So he's going to put some uh, permatex on there Or is that what is that RTV? Yeah, permatex, black, black silicone permatex A little bit on before we put the bolt in it too. I don't know if we got too much on there or not, but you know, they had a ton on it. When we pulled it apart, it was squished all the way up through the other end. Clean that. And then blow it out. Yeah. We're gonna clean the splines in the yoke a little bit. That's pretty aggravating that they didn't include the correct size yoke seal in that kit. I made of a ring we got. Not not bad. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Probably wouldn't have hurt to polish that, but mm, yeah, we can actually pull it off there and still polish yeah. it. We gotta get that on there anyway. Yeah, I didn't think of it. So we're gonna polish the yoke where the seal rides. We just didn't think of it, so we're gonna get that while we're thinking of it. and clean in there. We just took the wire wheel on the grinder, on the bench grinder, and polished that up a little bit. You can see that little line in the middle. That's just where the seal has, has been. One little trick that you can do sometimes is you can knock the seal in a little bit farther, and it'll kind of, uh, or on, in this case, you'd have to go in, but you don't have much room on the yoke, it looks like. Anyway, what well, my point was is sometimes you can move where the seal rides on a sealing surface, and, it, and get it off of the worn spot. But in this case, it's probably okay. I hope you understand what I was trying to explain it there. It shows a discoloration a little bit, but yeah. it's not actually, uh, don't feel a groove in it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not worn, really. Come on. Went right on there, guys. 
Just gotta find that spot. Oh, talk to it dirty. A little bit of silicone around that washer. And yep, and a little bit of sealant right around here. Right around where the splines peep through. Just trying to keep oil leaks to a minimum. It's almost impossible on a machine. And then we got a washer and a nut. Let's clean that washer too. Got a big thick washer that goes on here. It's almost like a spacer. Probably is a spacer. And then we got a lock nut. A little uh, nylon lock nut that goes on there. Nylock. So he's cleaning that spacer after there. You put it on there, rough and whatnot. Some people probably think stuff like this nitpicky, but heck, when you're going this far with something, why not go ahead and do it right? Clean everything that you can before you put it back on there. Just takes a minute. I'm sure there's probably a torque spec for this and I can go look in the manual, but we're probably just gonna give it a good uh, snap on torque wrench. And that thing could probably just strip that nut out. It's strong because that's a thin nut. You can't really do it too much. We'll recheck it when we get all that together. But uh, got that. So that's sealed off good and got the sealing in behind there so hopefully that won't leak i'm hoping that seal holds out good for us as long as you keep also in the kit there's two little nylon style rings right here that were not included in the kit so there were several things in this kit that i'm disappointed with uh, that weren't included but hopefully these are still good Don't forget to put your thrush washer in here. Right there's a spacer, don't forget that. Clutch your stack on top of there. Well, so that went in there. I think we think it's in there as far as it's supposed to go. Yep, I'm pretty positive it is. So now we're ready to start putting the reverse clutches in. And try to get some oil on them here. The jug ain't big enough, hardly. We'll adapt it and make it work. Just like we do everything else. <laughs> good, thing, good thing it's flexible anyway. Yeah. So those are going to go. Fiber first. And it's odd, we were discussing that there's no pressure plate. Evidently, the actual case right here is the pressure plate. That's odd. That's, I mean, that's really weird. But. Looks like the, that's the way that it goes. Mm -hmm. Now we got a new metal. These will only go in one way. You've got these dowel pins. Look at that, I'm gonna hit it the first time. You can, see, uh, you can see these dowel pins right here. Those come out and you have to remember to put those back in. One right here and where's the other one? Mm -hmm. One right here. Here, there, and there. Those are three of them, three dowel pins. Three dowel pins, one here, one here, and one right here. Uh, and those metal clutches will only go in one way, so they have to be orientated to fit the dowels. So you may have to flip them over.
see if I hit this and ride the first time. Huh. Hey, baby. All he's doing here is he's just, we've got oil in the bottom of that jug and he's putting some oil on the clutches, lube them up before we put <laughs> them in there. Had oil yeah, up. he almost had an oil bath. Getting close to the top of the stack. Now we've got a pressure plate. We'll polish this up real quick with a little tool that I showed you earlier. Clean it up some. Yeah, but this is the in there too. pressure plate. Leaf spring pole. Yeah, and then there's some uh, little Leaf. springs that go in there. What can we let this down? And the little slots. We're going to clean all this stuff up. We'll bring you back. Just like the other stuff, he's polishing this up a little bit. Got a few little spots on it, and we still got a couple yeah, little spots. Yeah, actually just a tiny little pit. I don't want to go down too too much on mm -hmm. that. It's not sticking out, so it's not as much a worry. Polished up, and then we're going to clean it up a little bit and put it on there. And you can see these springs. We put these springs back in. Those little springs have to go all the way around right there. That's what holds the pressure on a pressure plate. Okay. It's back in there again. I think this only goes in one way as well, same thing. Yeah, all it, the dowels are lined up. lines up with the with a dowel. I marked this one up here, plus you got you only got two things. springs here, three, three, and three. So for whatever reason it's only got the, 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 the springs are kind of all set. Alright, so now we gotta rebuild this. This is a piston. This is like the front section. And we got to take all this out and uh, clean it and put some seals in it. If we got seals that fit it, <laughs> hopefully. Okay, so now the way this comes out is kind of like that little small hub that we showed you earlier, but instead of being in the middle here where the pressure ports are, they're along the edge, and we don't know exactly which one, so we're going to do some testing here. I hope that thing won't blow out and hit ceiling. There That's going to be it. There's one up there. <laughs> See, it's already starting to come out. He's applying air pressure there. <laughs> you can't ever do that without getting uh, your eyeballs full of something, usually. Any, most of you people out there know anytime you get some carburetor cleaner or parts cleaner, you're going to get some in your eyeballs. It's just, you just might as well get ready for it. Let me get three pliers, grab one side. she's out that's what it looks like it's just that's a piston and that's where you get your pressure for your reverse clutches right there we're gonna clean this all up and we'll bring you back after we clean this all up okay so we cleaned this all up and uh, we installed our new o-ring right here there's an o-ring right there i don't know if you can see it right there and we cleaned our piston up and we've got our new square o-ring installed on that one that's the one with the yellow stripe on it and we're going to reinstall the piston and try not to pinch the seals probably going to have to help it with something just like always mm, it looks like it's it's got a uh it's got a taper to it, so yeah. it should should take it, I believe, on both we'll sides. Sway it a little bit here. Love tap 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 tappy. It's high on this side. Yeah, I just want to push the sure fits a lot better. Yep. New seals. Okay. And it's installed clean. New piston seals. 
Wipe this down we'll and put the, seat in the gas. See what's next here. Show them what kind of Alcampucky you're using there. Permatex Indian head. That's just to hold the gasket in place here. Ensure that it's sealing good on here. We've got a paper gasket that goes on there. Right here. Just want to make sure you don't get this stuff excessively around your pressure ports. Some of those are bolt holes, but some of them are actually ports that the fluid goes through to work this piston up and down. So you don't want to get any garbage in there. And a little bit on top here. Oh, 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 oh. We're just checking to see which, oh, which oh, way oh, 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 oh. goes to line it up, the bolts. And I'm pretty bolts. positive that's the way it goes. I think it is too, because this is goes on this side. That port right there, that uh, fitting. Yeah. There we go. Counterclockwise a little yeah, bit. I mean. cool. There it is. Make sure this one goes. Now this is those funny looking 12 point bolts. They're called fairy bolts. They look like this. And you gotta have a 3 8 12 point socket, thin wall to get those on. So, so it'll fit in there. There's no turning back now, she's closed up. Check that again. <laughs> Let's see what we're at now. That seems like more, doesn't it? it? Does, but it would be too. Let's take this off before it seals. Uh huh. See, we messed up. We messed up on our little uh, little spacer right here. So we got to take that back off and put that on, and try not to rip the gasket. Right, I shouldn't be set up yet. It's half, half on the top and half off the bottom. Of course, that's the way it always goes over here. clean this up we forgot this pesky thing right here that's a wear washer it's got to be cleaned up here i'll do it yeah, i'll get it cleaned up i've got a record here yeah. just a that fiber might one. be dirtier than the just a <laughs> fiber in the head maybe here some is. oil some oil on there A 
little oil on it and put that in there so see how easy it is to forget a little piece right there we saw that there was too much in play on the on the shaft and hopefully that's what was causing it Looks like it's a little better. Oh yeah, barely got oh, any. Oh yeah, that tightened it up. It was what, 10 to 86 thousand. Oh or yeah. So we're gonna, we didn't show you the dial indicator we used the last time, so we'll show you this time and we'll see. He's got a cool little uh, fixture to mount that dial indicator on there. I want you guys to see. It's pretty cool, I've never seen one like it. So I'll bring you back when we do that. We're gonna take a little short break here. What we've done so far, as we put our screen in, cleaned it real good. It was pretty dirty. And uh, got it back in there. And he's putting a little bit of sealant on the pan. There's no gasket for the pan. Uh, there wasn't one on it when we took it off either, so I think that's maybe the way they were from the factory. He also, Puts icing on birthday cakes and, and stuff. Also, also decorate cakes. Yeah. Only bad thing about this icing, you can't really taste it and lick it off your fingers. Mm -hmm, yeah, probably doesn't taste the best. Sure. Look how nice and clean that pan is, and there's your magnet. Nice and clean. That's the way we like it, right there. Also, there was a, there's an O-ring that goes on this sump screen right here, and we have an O-ring, but it looks like it's way too thick, so we just reused the one that was in there. Seems like it's sealing up good, so hopefully it is. Where's your bolts at? Right back here. Here's some bolts. Should have cleaned them, but no. Well. Getting them air bolts in. We'll bring it back in a little bit. Now it's time to get ready to put the pump on, our new pump, and we've got to install this gasket. It's a square gasket. Kind of fits in there almost like a snap ring, apparently. Oh, charge pump going on. Did the ports line up and everything? Under well, there? the bolts are all set to, to only go only going one way. One way, I believe. Hope this so. one's this one's farther to the edge. This yeah. one's a little bit in. So, see if they all line up here and we'll see. Yep, those two are going in. And that's going in. That has to be it. Yep. It has to be it. Half inch. This right here, whether it should be torqued because of that gasket, I'm not sure. Okay, so the torque spec on the pump bolts are 17 to 22 foot pounds. So I think we're going to go to 20.
$10,000 torque wrench snap on. Yeah, not quite that much. <laughs> I'm joking, but you know, everybody out there knows how expensive snap on is. Twenty foot pounds. I told you guys that I was going to show you all uh, the tool to check the in play, the caliper, or not the caliper, but the dial indicator, and I forgot to film it. So we're at least going to show you what the tool is. It's got this flex fixture. And it's flexible until you tighten this piece right here and then it's rigid. I've never seen one like that, but it's pretty cool. And you can just clamp it on anything with these pliers, come with it, and then you can check it. Pretty cool, huh? We're gonna see if we can't disassemble this control valve and see if we see anything wrong with it. It's going in there sideways, is it how it goes? Yeah. And then like this roll thing now. See if we can get the valve. See, there's the roll pin. We should be able to remove the valve and spring. And the spring is intact. It's not broken, hopefully. Mm -hmm. What else we'll find is kind of dirty looking in there. And this is going to be a flat O-ring too, and we, I will not have any of those. Got the control valve back in and put the plate on in the gasket. There's a detent ball and a spring in there. And you can put some grease on the spring. If you get that plate off, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, that'll keep the spring in there and lay it up on its side so that this part is facing you. you know, you'll have to have your bolt ready, put this plate on there, compress that spring on the detent, and the little cap that goes underneath this only goes one way. It's got a tongue that sticks into the case. It only goes one way, and you'll see how uh, the detent balls, there's two balls in there. Must be a male. Two balls. Correct. Pesky snap rings. Oh, you dirty dog. Here's the big solenoid. That's your clutch disconnect solenoid. We're gonna test that and see if that works, see if it moves. Put, put 12 bolts to it right here and see what happens. But I was getting oil leaking out of this. I don't know. So I don't know if it's gonna, hope, hope it doesn't still do it, but we didn't change anything. We didn't put any seals in that, so I don't know. We'll see. And there's the shifting linkage arm. Here's what it looks like with the solenoid back on. The solenoid is bad. It tested bad. But uh, I think that if you leave it unhooked, the, tra the transmission st uh, still should work normally. The only thing is your clutch disconnect button on your bucket lever or the little button that's underneath your pedals if you still have that hooked up underneath your brake pedals will disengage this. But this one's bad and it's like 400 bucks, so I don't know. I doubt that I'll replace that. 
I haven't used that in years and years and years anyway. It is nice to have though. I remember when it worked. When I first got this machine, it worked. So we almost got it back together. That's no more than one spring, one shoe fall, and mm -hmm. it's completely clean. Good. So he just took this part, disassembled it, and made sure that that uh, check ball, there's actually a check ball in here. Spring and the check ball. This is just a test port. That's... And, uh, we clean all the way out or anything? Yeah, I, that, I, yeah out, I blew that. Blow it out. So uh, we just about got it back together. Um, that's just about all there is to it. I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna put the uh, bell housing back on it or what they call the Torkenberg cover. I think I'm going to put that on the engine first after I put the torque converter. One other thing I wanted to tell you guys, uh, torque converter is expensive for these. It's like cheapest one I could find was around 800 bucks that was in the United States. Uh, and I wouldn't suggest using the old torque converter, especially if you have clutch problems because the torque converter is probably going to be full of debris and stuff that you don't want to get back in your freshly rebuilt transmission the shuttle. So I would suggest that you get a new pump and a new torque converter. That's the same thing always goes for an automobile too. Anytime you rebuild a transmission, it's just silly to not put a new torque converter in. You're just asking for trouble if you do that. So I think it just pretty much buttons this part of it up. This is where the dipstick goes, by the way. This is the, for the check the level. There's a big fitting that goes in here. But that is just about almost back together. Uh, probably probably took us about four hours, somewhere in there. If we wasn't lollygagging, just sitting and talking to each other and this and that. Plus we were, this is the first one of these that we've actually rebuilt. So uh, we were checking on in the manual and everything, taking some time. It took us probably four, four and a half hours to do it and clean it. That's, that's, you know, considering cleaning everything and all of that. I'm doing some tests on this. So not too bad. I'd say if we did this again, we could probably do this in two and a half hours, knowing what we know now. Especially wish we would have had the, uh, some of the seals and the O-rings that we wanted to uh, use on this, but we didn't have them, unfortunately. Got the oil pan back on, drain plugs tightened up. Just gonna find something to plug this up and some of the ports. And make sure nothing gets in there. So, that concludes the video. In case you're wondering who's been doing most of the wrenching on this thing while I'm doing all the blabbing, this guy right here. The good looking one. <laughs> it's my buddy Aaron. We like to make videos when we can to help people. Like I said, there's no good videos rebuilding this particular transmission right here for a, a 580 Super E construction king. So hopefully this will help a lot of you all out there if anybody's got a problem with their transmission. Uh, it's, it's heavy, but it's not like super heavy. I mean, uh, if, if you're a pretty strong person, uh, you still need to have a jack to get it out and kind of jack it down, but you got to really watch about balancing it when you pull it out because it will fall. And if it hits the concrete, you're going to crack your bell housing or crack something else that, you, and that would be not good. That equates to a bad day. And parts are getting very hard to find for this. I've found I'm dealing with the transfer case problem right now. So if anybody out there has transfer case, uh, comment in, in below, or if you had transfer case problems for your four-wheel drive backhoe for this machine and you found parts reasonable or even used ones, comment below and let us know where you, where you found those and uh, who you got them from. Found another thing we kind of looked over and forgot. This ground for this wiring harness goes right here. Right there. That should be it. 